So, Arsenal 2, Brighton 0. Uh, one of the most comfortable one-sided football matches you're going to watch all season. Also, one of the uh, the worst finishing performances you'll see all season. The amount of chances we had today, Jez, was insane. Too many touches, overthinking it, not passing at the right time or passing too early. Like it On another day, that could have been 6 or 7 nil. Now, we had so many good chances today, but ultimately... We kept a clean sheet. We got the job done. Our captain on his birthday, I thought was brilliant today, apart from his finishing. Um, Declan Rice again. Uh, he probably should have scored as well. And uh, who knew? Mikel Arteta has unlocked the silky German Jez who killed the game off. Make sure you sub to Arsenal History and more. Um, the link will be in the title if I can squeeze it in, if not in description. And make sure you sub to me. I'm less than 50 away from 90k people. So come on, let's get that done. <laughs> Get, get uh, come on, big up. But what did you make of that game today, Jez? Well, it was so one-sided, wasn't it? It was incredible. Um, I didn't expect it to be like that, to be fair. I expected a little bit more out of Brighton, to be fair, to be honest with you. Uh, I mean, the stats prove it. 56% possession in the first half, 13 attempts in the first half. I mean, you can't honestly say you often see that from Arsenal. Uh, yeah, they just did. Brighton didn't come out to play, did they? I don't know what happened. They were poor, very poor. Arsenal, I thought, played with great intensity. Um, well done, Mikel Arteta. You had the team set up. Bang on. Uh, but, Lee, I've been saying, Kai Havertz, I told you. There's a player in there. <laughs> you did tell me. I told you. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm glad to see scoring goals, actually. Um, he looked, nice finish he, as well, wasn't it? Good run, nice finish. Yes. But he's made that. He's made them runs a lot against Aston Villa. He made them runs. And uh, what was the game before that? Um, I can't remember the game before that. But he was making runs in that game. But people weren't finding him. But the Aston Villa game, he made a lot of decent runs. Mm. Yeah, and it was just like the ball was too far in front of him, or it bounced off of him. Behind but, him, whatever. Mm, yeah. But yeah, but listen, we didn't really notice him today, like because Odegaard and Rice were kind of running it. Really, they were the ones more on the ball. And then the wingers as well. So he was kind of like fifth in the pecking order, really. Yeah, I didn't really see Jesus a lot today until he scored. Right place, right time, fair play to him. Yeah, but um, yeah, it was a good goal. Nice flick on from their center off. Cheers. <laughs> their yeah. goalkeeper kept him in the game despite being a calamity at times. Like he was a bit shocking, flapping at stuff, um, especially um, on the corner like that we scored off of. He, I don't know what he was doing. Uh, 29 should have scored as well. Open goal, six yards out, free head. I put it over the bar. Martinelli, very disappointing today, man. Very, very disappointing today. And um, and Bukayo Saka, mate, let's just hope he rests up because he, he he wasted a lot of chances today and he needs to finish his right foot finishing off. Yeah, Because if he can score a lot off, off of that right foot, he becomes a bigger problem to defenders, doesn't he? Mm. Don't agree. Martinelli, I, I think... I don't know. He, he seems to have dropped off the off the planet a bit. He's he's just not as sharp. To, well, to me, he's not as sharp as he was this time last year. Um, Saka, mm, yeah, disappointing. But overall, it was a great. I, you know, I'd say it was a very good performance, but it was frustrating. I have to tell you. Mm. It, um, I'm glad that Kai Havertz is starting to shine a little bit because. As I said, any player that pops the Arsenal shirt on, I will support them 100%. Um, and I know we can sit and criticise, which we do, but that's what we're here to do. You know, we give honest judgment. And I can't see why people get upset about that. But they do, but never mind. The thing is, we have to sit here, Lee, and I'm going to ask you this question. Dare we start to believe... Dare we start to believe? You, we well, can. We, I listen, you've got to live in hope, Jez, yeah? But at the same time, there was a reason for the last two games this manager has allowed the other managers to make four subs before we've made one. He don't rate the bench. Yeah? Four subs again from them today. Four subs from Villa the other day before we made a sub. I thought the subs did all right when they come on. Smith Rowe looked lively, should have scored. Um, Eddie set up the goal, uh, the killer goal. Um, but yeah... <laughs> I'd, I just look at that bench and I just think, yeah, we've got a few injured players. Thomas Part is apparently back in training. Tommy's out injured. Timber, we don't know how good or bad he may be. He's, he's only kicked the ball for 20 minutes for us in, in the Premier League. And yeah. then um, what else we got? Who else we got injured? 
think that's it, isn't it? Oh, uh, uh, Jorginho missed today, but that ain't nothing major, let's be real. It was only one game he's missed. But I was looking at it and I think like we were in this position last year. Yeah, the, the World Cup was on this point last year. I think the final was this day last year, maybe, or there or thereabouts. And we were sat top of the league and we were sat on podcasts. We were sat on the last fan cam. I think it was Wolves was our last game before the World Cup. We were sat there going, January is going to show the ambition of this football club. And then we went and signed Trossard. Fantastic. We're like, right, this club's on it. We're going for it. Mm -hmm. And then we went and signed Jorginho and Kivior. Yeah, we can't be making that mistake again, mate. Yeah, because Man City, as much as people want to laugh at Man City, if Liverpool end up winning this game, and it's 34 minutes gone, nil-nil. If they win this game, they're only six points ahead of Man City. And they have been shocking this season. Yeah, mm -hmm. And they've not had De Bruyne. Haaland's missed a few games. Yeah, and they will spend money. Yeah, they'll go in out in January. Pep's not stupid. Yeah, I think Pep thought he could get away with getting rid of Gundogan, Mares, and Laporte, and um, a few others. Yeah, but it's not quite worked out for him. Yeah, now adding De Bruyne injury and uh, Haaland injury, Doku injury, all of a sudden you've lost half of your squad, mm. like the, the fourteen or fifteen players that have got you over the line or there or thereabouts. Maybe not Doku, obviously, because he's only just joined. But you lose it and suspension to Rodri twice this season. So, I don't know. I don't know. Man City, for me, are still the favourites. I think the problem we have yeah, is both of the managers we're up against. Forget Unai Emery for a second, but both of the managers we're up against with Liverpool and Man City, they've both won it. Mm. They know what it takes. Some of their players have done it and got over the line, especially City last season. Liverpool, Van Dijk, Alisson, Trent, they've got over the line. Salah, none of our players have got over the line with Arsenal. So, no. I'm confident that we can do something in January. But, again, if they let me down in January, we ain't winning nothing. I totally agree with that. Now, the, th the only thing I'm going to say on this is that Man City are misfiring. You're quite right. And they will fix up. They will sort that because that's the sort of club they are. Um, are we getting lucky? Well, we have been lucky, yes. But today, I think Arsenal was sublime. The football we played was against... It was against a poor Brighton. Brighton were... I don't they know what... They, they were crap, mate. They were awful. I, think that, I thought we'd get more out of Brighton than that. Um, I called it... My, predict, my prediction was a 2-1 win to wee Arsenal. Um, but you have to start... I, I'm, I'm, maybe it's the time of year. I don't know. Um, it's the fact that I'm thinking we could be positive here. And we could get, we could do it. I'm not going to yeah. throw it in the bin yet, but I tell no, you, nobody's been amazing, have they? I mean, Man City haven't been great no, at all. No. Liverpool, Liverpool have only lost one game that they got robbed by Spurs or VAR, should we say? But I've watched in, them against Palace last week. They were awful, mm -hmm. and until Ayu got the second yellow card, they were never winning that game. Yeah, and then I'm watching them now. They've missed chance after. They're doing what we did yeah. today: chance after chance after chance after chance. Nobody's really been brilliant. Yeah, and then you've got Unai Emery in the mix as well. Yeah, imagine if he won it. Yeah, if he wins, and I said this on the end of the watch along, yeah, or backstage, I think. If Unai Emery wins the league with Aston Villa, which I don't think he will, but if he wins the league with Aston Villa, Pep Klopp and Arteta should all be sacked. Yeah. Yeah, they should all be sacked. Yeah, but because you've allowed him to walk in when he's never, he's been ridiculed in this country with a team that has got next to no money compared to us. Mm. Yeah, with players that, are deemed nowhere near the level of our three teams. If he wins the league, it could be a Leicester season. Who knows? Yeah. Exactly. That's the point. I, I don't think it will be because I think class would always rise to the top and that would maybe be an anomaly that season. Yeah, But if none of our three teams, Liverpool, City and, and us, of course, go out and actually do what's required, you never know. He's just going under the radar. <laughs> well, that's that's the dangerous thing about um, that manager. I mean, I, 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 I didn't want him to go. I, I was an Unai Emery man in personally in my book but uh it is what it is we've got to move on but the thing is you never know um with a team like he's got and they've got away with it again today one nil down win two one against Brentford mm. you know sometimes you just have to say oh gotta be careful here and um I just think that maybe it's time to start saying okay do the right thing in January Arsenal get Tony in you know apparently Rumour, he's looking forward to, if he could join Arsenal, he's looking forward to it. So, but I think, isn't it the story again? 
we've got to out players before we can get the player in. Yeah, see, this is this is where I this is where I get the umpires right because, like these, most of these stories that come out, you have to we have to take them with a pinch of salt when we're linked to a player, and, and when it's when it's good or bad, we're linked to a good player. Oh, everyone gets happy. Yeah, cool. We're linked to a good player. That's just the agent of the player trying to get him a new deal with his club, right? That, that, that's how I look at it. But then yeah, we right. we hear these stories come out about oh, we have to get rid of Eddie to sign something. It's like we're not skin. No, we're not. Yeah. So for me, that's the club peddling that out to journalists to lower the expectations for the January window. So then what you'll get is you'll get thousands of people on social media saying, well, January's hard to sign top players. Why would clubs want to give their best players away? Well, mm -hmm. it's the same in the summer. The only difference is your mid-season. Well, Ivan Tony's not played all season. So Brentford surely would be accepting 60 million for him. Yeah. Because he ain't played, and they're still they're still getting results. I know they didn't today, but they're still there or thereabouts where they were last season. Mm. Yeah, so it's what it is, isn't it? We need to, we need to buy three players in January: a, a striker, oh, a centre back. Because if that one of them two get injured, we're finished. Yeah, and we need oh. another midfielder. The only thing I'm going to say on that note is the fact I reckon Ramsdale will be out the door, so we, we'll probably end up buying another goalkeeper. Yeah, or some Brazilian kid we've never heard of. Exactly. <laughs> uh, make, sure, make sure you sub to Arsenal History and more people. Uh, get the subs up on this channel as well. Uh, make sure you check out my, my fan cam, Kenny's fan cam. Uh, Matt is up next. We're 45 away. I've just checked now. 45 away from 90k. Seems like an eternity since I hit 89k. Maybe I'm watching it too much. But <laughs> it's what I'm it is. Straight away from four and a half. And it's there you go. Come on. Get Jez up there as well, man. Come on. Get Jez up to four and a half K people. Fully deserve 45, not four and a half. Or even more than that. Yeah. Arsenal history and more. If I can get in the title, I will. If not, it'd be in the description, people. Uh, Matty next and then player ratings, people. Adios. Ciao. Come on. This lot are still drawing. Nil, nil. <laughs>